Hi guys, I'm Dr. Moore here and welcome to my channel. Today we're here with Shalom of XOLO Part 1 at Virtue Supply Company, 510 Northwest 11th Avenue in Portland, Oregon. Uh, this place has been open for about two years. I think your art's been on the wall ever since they opened, isn't it? Practically. Yeah, it's a resident artist here uh, since opened. Resident artist. Yep. So your artwork, it's very, this is a new line that you've sort of uh, produced. What, what do you call it here? Oh, it's a Predator Animal Series, so I try to do uh, kind of just just position on uh, the colorful palette that I use and try to portray more of like a, a serious uh, animal figure through all the artwork, as you can tell, the handbags and the canvases that I've made recently. Yeah, well, they're very cool. The, um, the thing that like, caught my uh, eye with your artwork is that it's actually, it's glow in the dark, is it? Uh, it's fluorescent, so it's, it's, it's UV reactor. Yeah. yeah, I wonder if we can get this, maybe we'll shoot in like an edit in a picture or two of these. This one's the lion. And then when you've got the lioness or the tiger? The tiger, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. great. Um, what kind of canvases are you using? These are the... Yeah, they're the level 3 gallery canvases, so they're uh, over an inch thick. <laughs> Technical. And then um, you just, with this new sort of product line, with your Predator line, you came up with... You, you just started doing bags? Yeah, so I decided to start doing some leather, uh, vegan leather handbags. Uh, and from there, it kind of transformed into backpacks, uh, since I found some uh, some similar ones that uh, people were really interested in. Kind of gave them the idea of like trying not to use actual leather because of the animals that I'm using as well, trying to like, bring more of a conscious uh, mindset to them. The quality is very good. Um, how did you get these like wholesale? Or? Uh, no, I just went out and purchased them. Um, uh, one of them was a gift to me, and after that, I'm like, I need to look for where uh, I could find vegan leather. Vegan leather, where do you get that? Uh, actually, I bought them online. Uh, Kathy Ireland is one of them. Oh, yep. <laughs> and uh, Aldo is another one. Uh, the Aldo one we get at the store. Uh, yeah, like I said, it's just kind of kind of tough to try to find the perfect vegan leather and it is a little harder to work with uh, just because of the flexibility on it. It's a little more flexible than uh, the rigid leather and so paint tends to crack on it. So I finally figured a way to keep it so it lasts on there rather than like the cracking from the paint. Are you creating your own mixture here? Uh, yeah, yeah, so it's it's Angelus paint, which is made for leather, and then uh, it's sealed with acrylic sealer and then layered. So then when it mixes in together, it's actually been done over like five times. So when it does end up scratching, you have a layer underneath. Excellent. Well, these are beautiful. And he signs all of them. Sholo. Sure. Like the hairless dog. Yep, the hairless Mexican dog. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so, the, what, what kind of made you, uh, when I saw your artwork uh, a couple of years ago, you were doing sort of a different sort of cartoony um, pieces and you kind of moved away from that? Yeah, I, I try to do collections uh, just to keep a comprehensive uh, series going. Uh, and I just get in that mindset too. Like when I think when we met, we had, uh, I had the, um, what was it, Pinocchio? Yeah. yeah, it was a Pinocchio, and then there was a like a Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse, and uh, Beavis oh, and Butt, yeah. and some oh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, try to keep the series together. It, it also helps me kind of stay in that same creative mindset as well. Uh, it, it it helps me kind of just guide the next project forward. The, when we met, we actually met one on the street at the, uh, the first Thursday Airport. Yeah, yeah in, the, in the Pearl, um, which is over now. What, what kind of exhibitions are you doing now with the Virtue uh, Supply Company? Um, actually, I, I'm not really doing any exhibitions right now. I'm looking forward to doing some new stuff. Uh, I have gotten a, a call for one, but it would, the series wasn't done in time, so I didn't want to put out a section of it and then like have more stuff come out. I, I tend to get in my own little bubble until the whole series is done, yeah. and then I feel like I can move on. But you kind of stay in Virtue Supply Company, right? Like right. The resident artist. So we, you, now you need to come up with a whole new body of work to do some exhibitions. Yeah, I feel like I, I feel like I do. Uh, 
kind of need to jump on to the next thing, and I might revisit it later. Um, like, I, I, what I have in mind for the next one is, is having, like, a Mesoamerican um, mythology series between, like, uh, you know, all the Mexican culture where, like, Mayan Aztecs and Olmec uh, kind of tie in together. Uh, I feel like those are more fun just because uh, I get to dive into history and also learn as I'm doing it. Yeah. And now, are you from Portland or? No, I'm from Mexico. You're from Mexico. Yeah. When did you get here? Uh, my parents brought me when I was three. Okay. Uh, so it's kind of uh, not my choice, but it's it's been great. You know, uh, yeah. still have my my roots in, in Colima, Mexico, which is uh, about two hours from Guadalajara. Okay. Yeah. So uh, they have a port there. It's beautiful. It's, there's a volcano too, and I feel like uh, a lot of my first starting with the, with the art, uh, a lot of it came from that uh, area, like the name is, is from the hairless dog that's actually originally there. Oh, okay. And so, I, it has a lot of history and I feel like I get to dive back in to like, the, uh, the mythology that goes with uh, Mesoamerican. And how did you learn how to sort of paint the or Was it just something you explored with? Or? I've done it all my life. I've never had an actual uh, cohesive piece that I can say is my style. Mm -hmm. So before I would kind of just uh, paint landscapes and just trippy artwork uh, and never really had like, oh, that's something I could do over and over in a different way. Uh, this actually came through a psychedelic trip that I had once. <laughs> and it, was, uh, it, it was just one of those moments that I had aggressed onto something that was out of thin air, really. Um, if I could explain it, I guess it'd be like what I saw was like a party popper in the air uh, with the little ribbons that fly out, you know, the ones that you have at like New Year's, like little tiny ones, yeah. the little ribbons. Uh, it was that, and it was more of me recognizing shapes and animals as it was falling down. And so I'm like, if I could grasp that and interpret it as I see the everyday world, then I think I have something that I can call yeah, well, you do have a recognizable style of this, um, how would you call it? What would you call this? It's a... Uh, I call it like a mix of pop art slash cubism. Uh, I try to keep uh, all the little individual pieces as 3D elements, and each 3D element faces a different direction. Um, at first, my idea was to kind of have people uh, come up with what they see first, and uh, have them recognize it, but I slowly morphed into more of, figurative art where you can right off the bat know that's a lion, that's a shark, that's a, yeah. that's a panther. So uh, the original idea was to make it so chaotic that you can see multiple things based on what you recognize through your own knowledge base. So uh, the, the way that I interpret my, uh, my experience that I try to bring forth into the art was more of like, uh, like those psychology paintings where they show you a blotter. Or yeah, that was uh, the type of deal where you, you make up what you see. Um, and so slowly I'll, I'll get back into that more chaotic uh, feel of it. Uh, but for now I feel like figurative makes it a little bit easier to understand. Um, and it's not always the best, just yeah. because as an artist I want to make it more fun and mysterious. But we do still need to sell art. And so in order to sell it, people connect to it a little bit faster than they can recognize it. Yeah. So, cubist. Pop. Pop, pop, pop cubism. <laughs> so, I don't know, figurative, figurative eye. <laughs> but, well, this is great, Luis. So, um, good luck with the, I don't know if it's called an exhibition if you're, I get, uh, good, good luck the with the residency. <laughs> We've got like these little uh, candles here. Um, you know, uh, art is a luxury, so sometimes people can't afford to get exactly. purses, but he's got everything bags, purses, candles. Um, stop by the pin. Uh, what were you saying? Virtue. Virtue Supply Company. Uh, uh, 510 Northwest E11. No, that's 11. Yep. Well, thanks, Louise. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi guys, I hope you liked this video. If you guys like this type of content, don't forget to subscribe and like.